Hello, welcome to the final session of the pen and wash course. Today we're going to be looking at moorland scenes. Okay, so here are some samples of um, moorland scenes I've created earlier using pen and wash. Um, so it was a good idea to have a sort of focal point. Um, as you can see by these, um, obviously here we've got a little, st um, little style to cross over. Um, the sort of twisty tree and the rock here is sort of a focus that takes you through to the here, a little bit of a wall and another tree. And here obviously you've got the little building and the fence, which sort of leads the eye through the picture. I've got a couple more here. Also thinking about different moods. So these are quite summery. This one's a bit more sort of stormy looking. I'll show you this one here. So another one here. This has got a little building in the landscape. And putting in a little bit of a fence, sort of lead the eye through. This one's of autumn colours, but quite a sort of nice summery sky. And this one here, um, much more moody looking, um, stormy sky. And I've actually used wax resist technique um, to get the light on the top of the clouds here. A bit more moody colours and um, a little bit of a stone cross in the foreground. Again, I've used a bit of wax resist on that to get the texture on there. Um, so I'm going to now show you what we're going to do, what I'm going to do for my main picture. So I'm going to use um, several different photos to sort of get colours and different ideas for the composition. Um, it's just the way I like to work. I like to do a bit of mix and match. I like, really love the sky on this one, quite moody, and these lovely autumn colours. We've got the darks on the tops and some really lovely light areas here, which are beautiful. And I also love this old granite post, which I think is lovely. So I'm going to actually use that in my composition to sort of get, give it a bit of an interest. So I've got my watercolour paper taped down to my board. I've thought about the composition. I'm going to have a few sort of hills in the distance and a sort of bit of a, a stone post here in the foreground. Before I start, I really quite like to do a stormy sky on this picture. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of wax resist. So I've got a white oil pastel. And I'm just going to do some sort of twiggly lines to hopefully give me some light sort of shining on some tops of the clouds little bit I'll do that before I start and the colors I'm going to be using I'm going to be using some burnt sienna some yellow ochre some cobalt blue and Payne's gray for the sky um, and I may use a touch of lemon yellow to give it a bit more zing um, okay so I'm actually gonna get my colors mixed up and I'm gonna come back and start doing the sky before I tackle the sky, obviously I need to do a little bit of detail with my pen. So I'm just going to come in and actually just do a little bit. I'm going to have a few sort of craggy rocks, a little bit of a tour on the top there. Something else coming down this way. A little bit here. I'm going to have a little bit of a old stone and post here. Got a few little rocks. Make it into a bit of a suggestion of a remains of an old stone wall there. A bit more wibbly wobbly scribbles, just like I did in the last session. Make that a bit more scribbly. Thank you. 
quite sure I'm sort of making it up a little slightly as I'm going along here so but I think that's probably enough for now and then I can actually I'm used to wet this pen and we can get the sky done so I'm gonna get some clean water and wet the pen okay so I'm just gonna lightly wet these areas and then dry them off but then I can put some colour in the sky just let that colour from the pen bleed down a little bit it gives it some tonal contrast which is quite nice realize I haven't put any wax resist on this this dry stone wall area so I better just do that quickly now oops grab my just gonna very lightly drag that down hopefully that will give a little bit of texture on these stones just do that lightly before I wet it underneath a little bit there we are I just need to dry this off now then we can look at put some colour in the sky oops Okay, so I've dried this all off. I'm going to now wet the sky area up to top of these hills. <clears throat> Thoroughly wet that paper. There we are. Right, so I'm going to start off with cobalt blue. Oops, a bit diluted. Here, bring that down. And I'm actually just going to lift out a circle. There we are. And I'm now going to go and come in with a little bit of um, add some Payne's grey to the cobalt blue to make a dark. Nice sort of dark, I'll show you, sort of midnight blue colour, which is just lovely. And now I'm going to come in with that colour and I'm going to come in and add add some detail to the clouds. So I'm going to come in and just daub this colour on while it's all still nice and wet. Just let that puddle and flow a little bit. It's going to give the impression of a bit more of a stormy, stormy atmospheric sky. Come in with just some Payne's grey, it's a bit darker, and come in and add some a bit more intense colour to some areas. A bit more intense, I'm just 
just going to put some water on that to let it merge and trickle a little bit. I'm just going to move it slightly so it just softens and merges a bit more. Actually, just wet underneath. I think the paper I maybe dried it a bit too much under here. Just going to re wet some of that a little bit. That's better. So some of that colour puddles down a bit. There we are. That's better, it's just softened it a little bit, it was a bit harsh, I think. I'm just going to drip some water on here. That's it, just to encourage that to flow that softly. That's it. It's quite nice. I'm just going to add a little bit more colour to a couple of areas, just Just try lighter, so you'll need to remember that. Try it quite a lot lighter than you, you think. So I'm just going to, again, let that merge and run a little bit. Just softly let it run and flow. Just so you get a nice soft soft effect that's nice yeah i'm quite happy with that so what i'm going to do now i'm going to dry that off and then we can carry on and paint some of the moors okay <clears throat> so dried it all off now now i'm just looking at the photo that i'm using as reference of the colors and i'm going to be using start off by putting some lovely the light lovely light yellows on here so i'm going to use some yellow ochre some burnt siennas and put in some blues to get the darks. All right, so I'm going to start off by and I'm using dry paper this time, so I'm not wetting anything first. I'm just going to get some of the yellow ochre, and I'm just going to start adding. That's quite dark. I've got that a bit too. That's better. Dilute it slightly with water. It's a bit strong, I think. When I do moorlands in, I quite like to do one section at a time and let the colours run a little bit in that one section. Just the way I like painting, really. But um, So I'm going to now come in and I'm going to get a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm just going to add, add a little sienna to some areas. And I'm going to let that paint flow. So I'm going to let that run in this direction. Run down. If you let the paint run on its own, it does some really nice things without you having to try too hard, I find. Anyway, I'm just going to put a bit of the water on that to let it run a bit. And it's giving you, gives you the sort of undulations in the hills without you having to sort of do too much. Just wet that, come back down. So yeah, that's given you some sort of nice different sections already so I now need to darken that off a little bit and I'm going to use the mix that I made up with the Payne's grey and the cobalt blue that lovely sort of midnight blue colour and I'm just going to add some darks to this just to the top of that hill there and let that run down to create hopefully create some of the darks And I'm going to just put a little bit on here as well, on this little top bit here, and let that run down as well. I'm just going to get a tissue and catch the drips. There we are. I'm just going to hold that up and let it run. Now, if I want it to run a bit more, I can just add a bit of water. So I'm just getting some clean water. Just dab in some water on there and that will make it run a little bit more. There you go. And that'll keep it make it keep going. As long as the paper's damp, it will keep running. See where it hits a dry area like here, that's dry, so it's I've got a little um light here, but I quite like that. So it's like the light on the hill hitting this side of the hill. So I'm just gonna drag that down like that. There we are. 
want to run a little bit more there. I might just put a little tiny, tiny bit more dark on this little area here, just a little bit. <clears throat> Let that run again. Just as you hopefully you can see that, I'm just letting it sort of do its own thing and run on its own, which is quite nice. Just going to add a tiny touch more yellow ochre there. That's a bit pale, just here. Just going to add a couple of daubs of colour. Then again, let it run. Put a little bit of water on it to encourage it to go. Make sure the paper underneath is wet, otherwise it won't go anywhere. That's it. And I might get it to go upwards a bit. Just very carefully moving the paper and letting it flow, not being too impatient with it. Just let it do its thing on its own. There. Just going to got a bit of a mark there. I'm just going to pull that down a tiny bit with a tissue. There we are. That's fine. There we go. There. That's fine. That's just giving you sort of gesture of sort of different surfaces on the hills by just allowing it to run. So I'm going to dry the area off and then we're going to do this next one. Okay, so dried that section off and now I'm going to work on this section here. Just find it much so much easier if you do one section at a time. You can hold the paper in whatever direction you want and you're not affecting any of the other paint. Right, so again, I'm going to start off with a wash of yellow ochre. There we are. Now, it's up to you what colour you put on next. You can put blues on to make greens, rusty shades, greys, whichever you prefer. I'm going to go in and put some um, burnt sienna, I guess, in here. Yeah, make it nice and sort of some nice sort of rusty shades, I think, coming in here. And I'm just going to drag that down a little bit, but then I'm going to let it flow again. Right, I'm going to get a little bit more paint. A little bit more and I'm going to start letting that flow flow down the page a little bit though, this way sort of follow the direction that I want the marks in the hillside to be just make sure the paper's not too dry that's it so get it running down I may also yeah I think I might just add a little bit of blue in here I'm going to put some cobalt blue just a little on the top here and as you remember from the last session when we used cobalt blue and sienna, you get sort of shades of grey. So I'm going to put a bit more water on that just to allow that to merge and run. And I'm just trying to hold the paper in the direction I want it to flow in. It's quite nice. I've got rather a funny gap here where it's dry, so I'm just going to wet that. And now you can see immediately the paint sort of merges and runs a bit better. That's better. As it looks a bit strange, just stopping. Yeah, a little bit more dark just here, I think, on that edge. So I quite like that edge to be a little bit darker and a bit more defined. So again, I'm just going to let that run. I'm going to wet. There we are. Wet it just to encourage it to go where I want it to go. That's it. Just a tiny bit more. Not too much, just 
just a little bit more just so it sort of finds its way down and defines that edge a little bit that's quite nice and I can just going to let that merge back down again so it's not sort of like a little stripe I don't want to get rid of all my light areas so what I might do I'm going to get a bit of clean tissue where you get the, the lovely little bits of light on the hillside I don't want to lose those so I'm just going to go in and just dab a little bit just daub a couple of areas to get the light back lighter areas again yep that's fine I think I'm happy with that so what I'm going to do now I'm going to dry that section off and then we're going to move on to the next one okay so I've dried that section off and I'm just going to hold this up so I don't know if you can see it by letting the paint run and merge all on its own you get these really nice little rivets of colour and sort of little watermarks and things appear which I think is really much more natural and it looks sort of like the sort of cragginess of the hillside it's really nice I think it works it works well um so I encourage you to have a go at doing that it can be a little bit scary but um good fun let's get the heart pump in right so I'm going to now do this next section and instead of using yellow ochre this time I'm going to use a little bit of yellow lemon yellow to make this foreground bit a bit more zingy and bright That will hopefully bring it forward and it looks a little bit like when you get the lovely light catching on the moors which is just so beautiful so nice brighter sort of color in the foreground and then i'm going to go in and i'm going to go in and add some cobalt blue and some sienna as well so i'm going to just like i did before i'm going to get a little bit of the here bring that down and just let that, that sort of run through a little bit I'm just gonna just so I've got a few touches of green in here and I'm going to drop some of the lemon yellow into that so it sort of merges a bit more when I hold this up so I'm hopefully going to get different sort of patches of color that's the plan I need to let that merge and run this direction doing very much I need to add a bit more paint I think it's not quite wet enough so add a few more touches of yellow then I'm gonna grab some of the blue and come in and add a few touches of the blue just to let them merge on their own not me doing too much to it there we are so I'm gonna encourage that to flow a bit Run down. Now, this one's not going quite the right direction, so I'm just going to drag that with a little bit of a tissue. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to get some water on my brush and just touch these areas with water, sort of soften those in. Okay, and I'm going to get a little bit of burnt sienna, dilute that a little bit. Just going to put a little bit of sienna in here as well, just in a few areas. Not too much, but just a few little little air touches of this in here. Right, and then I'm going to let that run down as well. Right, let that run and flow. Add a bit more water to it. Then I'm going to let it sort of go back up and merge at the top a little bit more. Okay. 
just taking some of the puddly bits. I've got a few little puddles there, so I'm just mopping those up a little bit. That's fine, good. Good. Now, while this is damp, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of tissue over this area, and I'm just going to splatter a little bit of that lemon yellow, just to give it a bit more... A bit more oomph and lift and be a bit brighter in a few areas. You do it when it's damp, the paint merges nicely, that's better. I'm just going to do that with a little bit of sienna as well. That's nice. Then I can let that soften and merge a little bit again. Just a little bit run and just soften. There, that's that's better. Okay, so I need to dry that off and then we're gonna tackle the foreground. Okay, so I'm now gonna dry this all. I've dried this off and I'm now gonna have a little bit of colour to the stonework that I've got here in the foreground. So I would like it to look sort of fairly grey and granity looking, so I'm gonna use it mostly cobalt blue and a little bit of sienna. I may add a tiny touch of ochre, but I'm not going to, mostly blue, I'm just going to come down and drag this along. And hopefully where I have put the oil pastel, I will get getting quite a nice little look there. So I'm just going to now come in and put a little tiny touch of sienna, diluted just to give that more of a grey, slightly greyer look, that's what I want, really, I'll just come in and This edge a little bit darker, so I'm just going to tiny touch more blue on that area. Touch more blue on a couple of areas just to darken them up a little bit. And then I'm going to just do some shadows under these rocks here. So I'm actually going to use Haynes grey and cobalt blue actually to get a slightly darker mix here that's better like I used in the sky just here I'm going to get a shadow then I'm going to get some water and see if I can soften that shadow in a little bit so I'm just going to then touch that with a bit of water and just soften that soften that shadow so it merges and runs a little bit that's better of colour there, that's great, I think that's fine. Um, so I'm going to dry this off and then I'm going to see if I can add a few little grassy, grassy now. All dried off and ready for the final touches. Now I think this needs some a bit more interest around here. I think it looks a little bit boring this area so I may put a few little fence posts in and I'm going to put a little bit of grass in the foreground. Now, a little tip that's quite useful, if you get, get to a stage in your painting where it's almost finished, you're not quite sure how to proceed and you're scared to do anything to it in case you spoil it, one thing you can do, if you photograph it, print some different set, print some versions of it um, and then you can just draw on here. So this is what I've done on this one. I've actually drawn on some different options of fences and grass and little trees to see what it would look like before I actually went ahead. And I decided I quite liked it like this. So then I went ahead and actually um, put the little fence on the actual finished painting. Okay, so that's a really good little tip that I do sometimes if I'm not quite sure how to proceed. But I think I'm going to put a few little fence posts in here and a few little grassy stems down here. I think I might need another little bit of colour here as well actually. A little bit of green I think down here would just sort of bring it alive a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my fine liner pen again and I'm actually going to put in a few fence posts here. Okay, um, 
I always like putting a little bit of fence or something in. Just gives it, just leads the eye, gives it a bit more interest. Need to put much detail in there that's something like that's fine so what i'm going to do i'm going to wet that with my my water and then i need to dry that off and then paint paint those in there i think that's actually better it's giving it a bit more something leading your eye through the picture which i think is a bit more interesting i could put another fence post here whether to or not oh i don't know i'll leave it like that for now i think i'll dry it and paint these brown and then i'm going to put some grassy stems in okay so i have added a tiny touch of pale green here just because it looked a bit a little bit pale and i've just with my fine liner pen just put a little tiny bit of wire along the fence there which actually just brings the eye forward i think actually that's that works it makes it a better composition the only other thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a little bit of detail with a few grassy stems i think so i'm actually going to get my fine liner pen i'm just going to do a little bit of a little mound here with a few little grassy bits few more here then I need to just add a little bit of colour to that I think maybe a little bit around the fence post as well just to Finishes it off nicely, I think. Right, so I'm going to just now add a tiny touch of colour to that with a fine brush, and I might add a few little splatters as well. So I'm going to use a um, mix of lemon yellow and a little bit of cobalt blue to make a green. There we are. I think that's all darker green. There we are. I'm just going to do a few little few little blades of grass just to add to that Bring a little bit of color down there and a little bit of burnt sienna Tiny bit in there, as it's more of an autumny scene. This one, rather than high summer. Put that colour down. That's better. And I might add a tiny bit of yellow ochre as well in there, just to give those nice autumny colours. That's it. That's better. Straw like. Okay, when you're doing grass make sure it's different shapes and sizes not just all in a little neat row there we are the only other thing i might think i might do is actually just add a few little splatters so i'm going to get my tissue put over all of this bit here and i'm just going to put a few little splatters like little grassy seed heads using a little bit of burnt sienna i think I'm gonna I may actually cover that like that. That's it. I'm gonna try not to cover up all the bits I don't want.
There we are. I think that just sort of finishes off having that little touch of colour in the foreground. A little tiny bit more there, that's it. There you go. There you go. And I think that's finished off. I will take the tape off, which always looks better, and just show you. So, all dried off, tape taken off, and here's the finished picture. Um, very much sort of make it up as I went along this one, I'm afraid. I didn't actually follow um, any photographs really. I just had a very, very basic composition and I added little details where I thought they were necessary just to make a pleasing composition. Um, I hope you have a go. Let main thing about this is letting the paint flow and run and um, do its own thing. And you get these lovely sort of marks and things happening all on their own that give you the feel of sort of the rivets and the little undulations in the hills. Hope you have a go. I hope you um, there's going to be um, a slideshow of other students work coming up. And um, also, if you do Facebook, it would be great if you could share any, any images that you you create. We'd love to see what you've been doing and hope you've enjoyed the course. Please, could you fill in a feedback form on our website when the details will be coming up? Thank you ever so much. Bye bye.